To sharpen or not to sharpen your images? That is the question. Then how much sharpening should you apply so you don't over sharpen? Well, in this tutorial, you're going to learn some pro tips for sharpening your images. Let's dive back into Darktable here and we're going to look at some raw photos and we're going to determine whether or not we should sharpen them and then how to sharpen them in Darktable. Then we'll jump into GIMP and learn how to sharpen our images in there. So we're going to take a look at this image first. I'm going to scroll in with the scroll button on my mouse. And I don't know about you, but I think this image is sharp enough. What do you think? Yes, technically you can sharpen this image even more, but I think it will degrade the image, not improve it. Now this next image down here on the left is much softer than the other one. So I think this particular image can benefit from some sharpening. Now, if you want to zoom in a little bit more, you can click right here to select a different percentage. So you can definitely see how much softer it is versus the other image. So I would definitely sharpen up this image. Now, how much sharpening I apply is dependent on the intended use for that particular file. If I'm going to post an image online, then I will sharpen it more than if I were to do a photographic print. But even then, I'm going to sharpen my photographic prints more or less depending on the size of the image. For example, if I have a small 5x7 print on my desk, I'm going to sharpen that more than I would, say, for one of these 40x30 canvas gallery wraps that I have up here on my wall behind me because I'm not going to be viewing these images behind me really close like I am my desk photo. So I don't need to spend as much time sharpening it and making sure I'm not over sharpening things like the skin. So if you want to sharpen your images in Darktable, just go to the search module here, type in sharpen, and you'll get this traditional style type of sharpening tool. Now I only sharpen my images when I've completed my editing. So if you're going to bring your images into GIMP, I would edit after you do all your edits in GIMP and then sharpen from there. But if you do all your edits in Darktable, you can go ahead and increase the amount of sharpening and the radius will enhance that sharpening a little bit more. And then threshold will narrow down the sharpening in the different tonal ranges from all the tonal ranges down to the midtones and the blacks and the shadows. And it will target the highlights less, which is where the skin tones are usually residing within your tonal range. So if I zoom in here, it's probably a lot sharper now than it was before. So let's take a look at the before and the after. So I think that might be a little bit too much. So I might bring that threshold down just a little bit just to tone it down some so it's not as sharp as it was before. But what I would prefer doing is targeting my sharpening with a layer mask in GIMP. So either way, I would probably export this particular file and then sharpen in GIMP instead. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's jump into GIMP here and we're going to take a look at this image and this one here. Both are in your section five folder. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this image and you can definitely see it's not as sharp as it could be. And again, I think that's because of some motion blur at the time of capture. So let's go ahead and work non destructively by duplicating this layer. And let's take a look at the first option for sharpening, which is under filters, enhance, and then it's right here, sharpen, unsharp, mask. Now this is an old school, traditional, classic type of sharpening that we've had in Photoshop forever. So if we go ahead and click on that, you can then increase the amount of sharpening from here. And then the radius, of course, will refine the edges a little bit more than just the amount by itself. And if you go too far, you're going to end up with this grunge look. So if you're into that or if that's what you want, that's one way to get it. Now for this particular image, it's not looking so good. So I wouldn't use that much. So if you bring your threshold in again, you can target that to reduce the amount of color fringing and the amount of the sharpening along the edges. So it's not as intense. I'm not really liking this particular sharpening tool for this image. The one that I prefer is also under enhance here and it's called high pass. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is the image is converted to grayscale. And that's because it's easier to see the sharpening along the edges of the detail more so in a grayscale versus a color image. But if you want to see the color image as you're adjusting the amount of sharpening, 
You can do that by going into your blending options here and selecting overlay. Now, as you increase the contrast level here, which is targeting the edges of the detail from lights to dark, you will see that it's beginning to sharpen up the image. But again, it's over sharpening the skin and the pores and the blemishes and everything are being enhanced. And I think that's degrading this portrait image overall. So I would probably bring the contrast level down to around two or so for this particular image, maybe a little bit more. And what I would do next then is I would use a layer mask on this layer in white, and then I would paint with black along the skin here to remove that sharpening from the skin. So I think that's looking much better now. The eyes are sharper, the eyebrows are sharper, and the hair is a little bit sharper, and so is some of the clothing. So you can adjust this to your own liking, but again, you have to determine how much sharpening you want to apply based on its intended use. Now for landscape photos, you can get away with sharpening a little bit more because you don't have the skin to deal with. So for this particular image, I would use the high pass as well. And I can increase that contrast to maybe right around two or so. Now for this particular image, actually, I'm going to go down lower because it's not as soft as the previous image. So if I put overlay here, you can see that we're already getting a pretty good amount of sharpening at one and a half versus two and a half with the previous image because the previous image, like I mentioned, had some motion blur in it. So the before and after. So I think that is much improved. It's not as soft. The details are popping and there's more sharpening and contrast from the foreground to the background. And I think this overall makes the image much better.